Hello, I'm Brian Farrell, and welcome to Pace IT's session on common security threats. Today we're going to discuss directed security threats, and then we will move on to security threats that are more along the lines of opportunity attacks. And with that, let's go ahead and begin this session. I'm going to begin by stating that not all attacks fall into a neatly confined category. Many times, different attacks are combined to increase their effectiveness. Now let's move on to directed security threats. Now, directed security threats are those security threats are those attacks that are intentional in nature. And the first one that we'll mention is shoulder surfing. That is where someone is looking over your shoulder in an attempt to gain access to information that they're not supposed to have. That's where they watch you type in your password or your PIN. And as a side note, the user doesn't need to be present for shoulder surfing to occur. You can just leave your PC running without a screensaver. Then there's social engineering. This is where social pressure is applied to get a user to divulge information or secrets. Social engineering can occur in person, over the phone, through email, fake memos, so on and so forth. Anything that tricks the user into divulging information that they shouldn't. Now there are several different types of social engineering attacks. The first one we're going to mention is phishing. Phishing is an attempt to get the end user to divulge sensitive information, as in usernames and passwords or bank account numbers. Phishing always occurs through electronic media, through email or through websites. Which brings us to farming. Farming is closely related to fishing, but it can be more passive in nature. Farming specifically uses a web page or site to glean sensitive information. The attacker develops a fake website and entices the end user into putting in their credentials and then the attacker gleans that information. Now let's move on to opportunity security threats. These are more along the lines of threats by opportunity. Uh, they exploit weaknesses and vulnerabilities. And the first opportunity security threat we're going to mention is malware. Malware is a broad category. It's usually defined as malicious software that has the intent of causing harm. But it can also describe legitimate code that is written poorly. And it's so broad that it actually covers any code-based security threat. The first one that we're going to mention is rootkits. Rootkits are stealth software that take over the root account, the administrative account. Rootkits attempt to hide their presence from the end user and antivirus through its authority level. Rootkits can be extremely difficult to remove because of their level of access to the system. They may actually overwrite the boot sector so that you can't remove them easily and need to actually reformat the whole hard drive. Another type of malware is spyware. Spyware is software that installs itself with the intent of collecting user data or information on habits without the user's consent. It's often configured to collect this information and then send it to a remote site at a specified time or it can just store it in a hidden file and wait for the attacker to come by and collect it. It has to have a host file in order to operate. When the host file is run, the virus is executed and then whatever payload is there is also executed. Now there are different types of viruses. There's a program or application virus and they attach itself to a program or application of course. There's a boot sector virus. Now this attaches itself to the boot sector of the PC. When the PC boots up, the payload is delivered. There are polymorphic viruses. They attempt to hide their presence by changing its signature on a regular basis. There are stealth viruses. That would be like your rootkit. Then there are multipartite viruses. They combine several components into one packet. None of the components on their own are effective. Now, viruses can combine several of these into one package, and it would still be called a virus. Now, worms are different than viruses. Worms are malware that 
do not need a host file. They exploit network resources and services to propagate and to move. They are self-replicating, unlike viruses. Worms mainly consume network resources, often resulting in a down network. Now, Trojans are malware that hides its purpose by disguising itself as something that the end user desires. They often come in games, free games in particular. The end user gets tricked into downloading the Trojan and the virus package is delivered. This is often the attack vector that is used to establish botnets or zombie nodes. Now that concludes this session on common security threats. We briefly discussed directed security threats and then threats of opportunity. Now on behalf of Pace IT, thank you for watching this session and I'm sure we will do some more soon.